Okay, man, I mean... But when I got this, it didn't look like that. Dude, what? Yeah. Alright, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am in Burbank, and I'm going to link up with my buddy Robert, who is an amazing potter. And look at that. There he is. What's up, Robert? Hey, what a surprise. You ready for me? I'm ready, Hunter. Come Beautiful. on in. So, as I was saying, Robert is an amazing potter, and we have... Uh, We've crossed paths recently. We've kind of just become friends just very recently, actually, with over the last, like, what, month, month and a exactly, half? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, we work at the same pottery studio. That's right. And so... Uh, and have fun doing it, too. We sure do. That's right, yeah. And so we have... What happened was one of the older ladies at the studio was telling me, oh, I know a guy that does something similar to what you do. He makes pots for succulents and for cactus and stuff. I can't wait to meet you guys. And then he came in. Sure enough... He tells me who he is. I look on Instagram. I'm like, I'm already following you, man. Yeah. Rest so, is history. Um, the rest is history. So here I am today uh, to check out his collection. And just upon walking in, <laughs> you know. This is one area. This yeah. is primarily my euphorbia area, as, as I you can, can see. see. Yeah, yeah. And for any even novice collector, euphorbias are the way to go because there's such a diversity. There's 7,500 species of euphorbias so you can't go wrong and they're very easy to maintain and propagate and they come in all sizes and shapes as you can see and they're easy to maintain just give them some sunlight and let them go and so one of the things too is a lot of people really like variegated plants you know and there are so many euphorbias where their natural um, color actually kind of looks variegated not to mention a plethora of variegated um, species to choose from and they usually don't cost an arm and a leg right. like some of the other stuff. And as you can see, for example, this is a Euphorbia grandicornis. If you look at the beautiful pattern that's imprinted on that, yeah. it's just stunning. Yeah, Euphorbias were some of the er, like first spiny things that I had that um, I didn't even realize weren't cactus. That's we're right. Talking, this is seven, eight years ago, but right. you know, I, I thought they were cactus. So these can be very misleading as this is, these are thorns as compared to cactus that have spines. So this is not a cactus, this is a succulent. That is also a euphorbia. But as whether it's a thorn or a spine, are they still considered modified leaves? They are exactly, that's exactly right. So how would that come into play then with something like the Pacopodium lamari, which at the moment, because it is the winter season, it's not leafed out, but this plant has leaves and spines, which there right. tend to be actually, uh, you know, there's even a, a lot of euphorbias that do have this, the thorns and or spines and leaves. Well, it's a natural protection from predators. The thorns allow moisture to get absorbed through them. They collect moisture on mm -hmm. the thorns. Well, and I know with a lot of cactus, I don't know, probably not so, so much with something like this where the spines are probably, they're smaller and much more uh, defensive, I would imagine. But with a lot of the cactus, like those spines actually provide some um, protection from the sun. Yes, at, you're right. Like they, with they the choyas yeah. and a lot of mammillarias, a lot of those white, heavily spined um, cactus. They do have that. And to much chagrin, they also bloom. Yeah, euphorbias all bloom. So you can see there. They're little. They're not significant, but they're there. Yeah, but they all, and they come in different. You know, that's a euphorbia flower as well. Yeah. So that's uh, a euphorbia milli. The common name is Crown of Thorns. And this particular one I've had for about 15 years, and this blooms 12 months of the year. Does it stay leafed out all through it, the winter it, it as well? It stays leafed, it'll lose a few, but it maintains its green, healthy leaves. And you can see there's new growth and new flowers about to open up right there. This is a, this is a great specimen to have if you're a new collector to get a Crown of Thorns because these are also easy to propagate. You just cut these, let them dry, put them in some well-draining soil, you have a new plant. And you wouldn't do that this time of year though, would you? Not this time of year, you, you wait till it's a growing season. And is this is this is a Madagascan euphorbia, is it not? It is, Yeah. that is, yeah. And this is a Madagascar palm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Pacopodium lamari. Euphorbias are a great beginner plant and for the experienced uh, collector as well. I mean, that's a stunning euphorbia yeah kevin is gonna go nuts over this section he's a big euphorbia guy and this was this this particular one was just a cutting i got from a good friend 
off of his very large specimen that was about 10 feet tall yeah and uh doing great and so for you with the, the space here you would be kind of in trouble if these plants were to grow to those kind of proportions so by keeping them in containers do you find that that sort of has like a bonsai effect for the plants to a certain degree well th that's my trick if these were in the ground this would be out of control yeah but every one of these plants is in a pot and some of them are in small pots and they still but i can maintain them for many many years right because of they're in a container how so often all, are you repotting these big old suckers i don't i repot them maybe about every five to seven years okay and then if i have to if they get too large i end up just cutting them and uh giving them for to friends family unlike but something like this with the arms i've had this for at least 14 15 years and keeping it in a small container, I've been able to keep it to a reasonable size. That's great. And then we can come over here. Here's my little area that I have. I actually have some cactus. Oh, wait I a do. minute. Yes, yes. This is a big surprise, Hunter, and to many of the people out there. Okay, okay. But yeah, because I heard you're more of a, you know, a succulent guy. I, from what I, I've been told, you're, you're uh, deeper in the caduciform world. I'm 99% succulents. I started this whole thing with cactus and then slowly migrated to... Um, the specimens that I really get more pleasure out of sure. and also easier to maintain and I, although I still love cactus and easier to repot too in a lot of cases they are <laughs> <laughs> I mean how can you not love their flowers I mean they're just incredible so this is my little flower bed where I have uh, my cactus uh, mixed with with euphorbias so you've got Echeveria laui, Agavoides, uh, that's, that's the right. only two I think I can ID so far is that that could be Conte right there, although it does look a little small. I love the Echeverias. This one about to bloom. Yeah. I got hooked on Echeverias about five or six years ago. I just love they kind of look like it looks like a flower to me, kind of like almost a, a, a rosette. And I, I, I so I, even when they're not blooming, I just love them and the variety of colors, too. Yeah, just extraordinary. Well, as I had mentioned in some of my previous videos, uh, particularly the one I did with Woody, <clears throat> Echeverias, Graptopetalums, and all those yeah, kind of right. soft, brightly colored, mm -hmm. what I call uh, trippy looking plants, you know, for somebody right. who's coming in like, wow, I can't believe it's like blue and purple and all this stuff. That's what got me into it initially. Yeah. And then as, as I've gone, I've so gotten... That, that, that's the hook that got you. Yeah. yeah. The, it was the, the gateway plant, you know? Yeah. And then as I've uh, progressed in the hobby... It's, now, in it's case anyone says anything, this is, yes, this is not a succulent this is a tree this is a mimosa tree okay and this is interesting because if you look at it when i got this about 15 years ago it was the size of my pinky and it was about 18 inches tall okay and it's a tree so i didn't want it to get large so i left it in the pot and i put another pot around it so it's and in it is still in a pot in double pot and even so, I'm sure it's broken through because it's gotten pretty large, but I keep it trimmed so it's kind of like a quasi bonsai. So how big would that get if it was not in a container? 20, 25 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I don't need that here. So. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to rearrange your patio too because a lot of things would need more shade. When we came, our paths crossed because of the fact that we were both into the world of making ceramics. That's right. Which means we are both very much into staging our plants. And so you've got a plethora of staged plants here. And are, are most of these in your pots? Most of these are my pots, that's right. And how long have you been making pots? Um, 10 years, a little over 10 years. I got started uh, working with uh, Erica Van Acker. Okay. I met her at uh, some of the sales and shows. She was a lovely woman. Right. And uh, I offered if I can come to her house to purchase instead of waiting for the next sale. And she agreed and that garnered a, and fostered a relationship. Very cool. And I was going on a regular basis, and finally I said, I wanna make pots, Erica. And she says, I'll teach you. That's and she'd awesome. been making pots almost 50 years, and she never taught anybody. So I was, I was, I really felt uh, uh, kind of in awe that she was offered that. So I, she got me started right. and taught me, and I've been making pots ever since. And every pot I make, I always think of Erica. That's awesome. And so, so she, she, ha she has since passed away. She passed away, but almost two years ago yeah and she's uh, uh certainly even with the younger generation i know a lot of younger collectors who are uh very 
passionately into her work. So she's uh, certainly a she, legend in the town. She is a legend. She believed in uh, in having the pot showing the plant, right. not overtaking the plant. Right. She was very organic in her pots. And so I try to do that as well. Is this you right here? That is mine. That's, that is true. That is mine. This is an older uh, you pot there, huh? Yeah, I've had that. A, oh, that was prob that's probably old. At least eight years old, yeah. Yeah, man. That <laughs> but I, but I love that it. I, but I love huge. it, yeah. When I got this very it, it didn't have any pups. Look at it. Yeah, I like that pot, man. I like that quite a That's bit. That's very organic. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I made that with Erica. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So the, so I, this is pretty much uh, Echeveria land down here. I just started collecting, and uh, it just kept growing and growing. And a lot of these, I used to have an individual pot. And it was actually too much, so right. then I, I decided to condense. Even though it's against my grain, because I've always been a believer in one specimen, one pot, right. to show it. But this is fun. Yeah, And it's for my sure. yard, so it, I'm, I'm happy with it. You I mean, even small specimens, I mean, uh, look great in a nice pot. And uh, they grow very slowly, and they'll probably be in there many, many years. And you still get so much enjoyment out of that. So you got the mellow, the Echeveria, the Meloformis, and the uh, Astrophytum. Yep. Myriastigma nudum. Very nice, Hunter. You're good. Well, not too bad. I could, yeah. uh, you know, I could ID a plant or two. It's and then, you know, even though it's a common, you know, Portolacaria afro variegata, you can still make them look really cool. Yeah. Look at that. See, I, I cleaned that. This was a bush, a solid bush when I got it. Right. And I cleaned it all out and staged it so it looks kind of a again kind of like a bonsai effect and so for the people at home that maybe you know are watching this or you know don't have a um big cactus and succulent society in their area can you tell me what is the what is staging what is the whole idea with staging staging is presenting your plant in a wonderfully beautiful way so that it, it's highlighted right so I look at it this way think of a painting with matting and with a frame right the painting is the plant the matting is the staging the rocks the topping that you use and the frame is the pot gotcha so it has to work together and you have to decide what do you want to be the highlight of the show and most times we spend a lot of money on our plants, but <laughs> you want the true. right pot to show it. Right. So, that, so staging is preparing the plant in a proper way, putting it in the right pot, and then staging it correctly with, you never want to see dirt. You always want to have some sort of a gravel or topping on it, all different colors. Right. And sometimes you want to stage it appropriately with some, some really cool rocks. Right maybe leaning on a rock or in a more natural setting. To try to kind of mimic what natural they would habitat. look like in their natural exactly. habitat. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. You got more stuff I here. Have more stuff here, Jeez, yeah. So Louise, again, dude. here's another Porta Lucaria. Uh, it was a bush. And it, after many years, I slowly worked this, cleaned it out. I continue to do that. So it's more of a bonsai, That's which it is cool. a bonsai. And here's a, a variegated form. Yeah, but you don't have to water these like bonsais. Which is kind of nice, know, right? Yeah. yeah, so a little uh, when it comes to taking care of them. Right. I was talking with a uh, gentleman the other day. He was showing me his collection in his house. He's like, yeah, I have to water my bonsais every, every day. day. I'm like, really? Every I, day. Dude, I would not. Yeah. Sorry, I just couldn't do it. I yeah. love them, but man, I could These not I do love. It. Now, for people who are just getting into this, the variegated ones are beautiful, but they grow very slowly in comparison to the non variegated. Why is that? Because it has minimal chlorophyll in there. Right. So there isn't enough chlorophyll to really capture that sunlight and turn it into energy for growth. So they grow very, I've had that plant in that pot a good 10 years. And it grows as compared to this one, you can see this is, I made into a cascading. And this is after, this is like tons and tons of clipping and grooming. Oh. So had you not done that, this would be the size of this tree behind This would it be huge, this would be huge, I mean, right? I'm, that's, I'm kidding, but. I know. Yeah. Then you got a nice Bucarnia and some other leafy salad type of uh, items back here. Yes, I do. I do. I love Bucarnias or ponytail palms. Yeah, we that saw in uh, Chiapas. Well, you, natural habitat. Yeah, yeah, natural habitat. Growing on cliffs in these maps. I mean, oh. just, it just absolutely gorgeous. I'll tell you, the ponytail palm was one of the first succulents 
that caught my eye. Yeah. When I said, what the heck is this? It's thing? an exotic it's looking exotic. plant. It's exotic, yeah. So I have quite a few of them. In fact, this is my oldest one right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's about 20, I've had it about 20 years. Very cool. And I purchased that from, I bought that from a, a fantastic guy named Lee Phelps from San Diego. The name sounds very familiar. He was one of the original guys and uh, he's also passed away, but I, I, that, I still have that one. I was just out in, uh, well, somewhere near the coast here in California, yeah. we're looking at Dudleyas. And as we get to the place where these Dudleyas are growing, I'm looking at this succulent looking plant that was growing there. I'm like, what is this? So yeah. I sent a picture of it to my buddy and he, it's a, it's a, the, it is a succulent. They've got these fat succulent stems and then they almost look like pelargoniums. Really? So, yeah, pelargoniums. pelargoniums yeah. yeah, so they almost look like that. They're called Coreopsis gigantea, and they're a succulent member of the sunflower family. Really? But they're growing on, on this rocky hillside? outcrop on this hillside never with all these like clumps of Dudleya yeah. growing Very at the cool. base. Such Very a cool, cool thing, man. Uh, here's, um, here's some other specimens that I love. These are Alita laborias. Lita laboria. Lita laboria. Do you know what family these are in? I don't know the family. So you got a whole species. bunch of them here. Yeah. So here, so Oop. the main characteristic. Look at the polka dots. Right. Every one of these has polka dots, except if you turn it over, there's no polka dots on the back. And it's nice and smooth. And that's actually the top. They're both smooth. Actually, they're all, they're, they're all smooth. There's about I think 34 different species of this, and you can see they're all very different yeah and this is the only species of all the Lidoboreas that has polka dots not just in the front but also in the back right that's, that's the really only cool. one I was lucky to get that one so but I so I love these these are actually a bulb yeah it's a bulb and you can see how they're growing do you know where these are from South Africa South Africa yeah they're from all South the bulbs Africa. huh yeah, all the bulbs are from all the, South all, Africa. all the cool interesting ones I yeah. guess and here's my crowning glory holy this Lidoborea. Crap. This so these are what plants look like. I mean, it's people see these little tiny plants that you go buy at a hardware store or wherever it might be, mm -hmm. a little local nursery. You see this little tiny thing in a two-inch pot. That's right. But this is what they, they grow. Right. That's the craziest so thing. So here's the story on this one. I got that about 15 years ago from a good friend of mine, Mike, down in San Diego. In a four-inch pot, there are about three or four bulbs in it. And within a year, so I and I put it into a six inch pot. Within a year, it was overflowing that six inch pot. Right. And I said, okay, we got to do something about this. So I moved it into this very, very large pot many, many years ago. And not only is the pot full, but it's completely cascading over over the pot. Yeah. And you can see, look at that. That's awesome. Man. And, and this, you, could, you could really, I mean, essentially, you could just pop one of those oh, off and just root it and you got another one. Absolutely. I could make a hundred different ones here. And these flower. Have you ever, do you, so you do obviously propagate some of your plants from cutting. Many. Have you ever tinkered around with growing anything from seed? No, I'm not a seed grower. Okay. You know, I, I like to see the plant already yeah. or the big specimen. I get so, you. I get you. Um, but I understand the, you know, the enthusiasm for, for growing from seed, but. You know, this is my front yard. I'm, I'm out here every morning and every afternoon spending time. I have my coffee in the morning, have my coffee in the afternoon, right about this time. That's a good time. Um, I'll take a break from the coffee this time, though, since you're here, Hunter. But that's, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I won't but, be offended by that. You know? I won't be offended <laughs> but, by that. But I love sitting out here on my porch and enjoying my plants besides taking care of them. I mean, to me, this is, this is my uh, Shangri-La. This is my paradise. And uh, I, I get enjoyment every single day. This, I, 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 man, I'm, uh, right? you know, I, you I can see it. I can, you okay. you're talking, you're talking, you, you have, this is not it? This well, continues I, I have a little more, but on? you can see I maximize my area here to my satisfaction. Yeah. But I, I still will. wanted more. So I said, which way can I go? I can't go laterally, so I have to go up. So you can see I took my, Dude, my this wall is... here. And these are all the pots that I created for this wall. Wow, man, this is awesome. So you see these hanging succulent wall gardens, but this is a hanging ceramic succulent wall, wall garden. garden. That's right. That's essentially, dude, this is fantastic, Robert. I'm glad you like it. I, I, love, ma I love making them and uh, that was the first wall pot I ever made. This one right here? Right there, yeah. Dude, it's a good one. That was the first one. And, and that, you know, one, that one I made because it's flat, so you can put it on a wall or you can put it on a on a shelf. But these are all, all for the wall and with a variety of different specimens. 
Yeah, I see. Dude. But again, I follow that organic look to the pots. I don't want them popping too much on the wall. I want them to blend in more. Right. And that was my goal. And, you know, I well, you took know, a lot of time to make these, but um, my wall's full. I don't know if I can put much more on here. My wife keeps says, hey, you have a little more room here. Make another one. Come on. I think you could squeeze a few I, more I, in. I, I mean, I, I don't want to get crazy, but I it's looking so. good. You know, it's looking good. So I have a, I have a, this is my interesting kind of eclectic look of plants that I have. So this is my living wall, my living wall here, wall of life. Looks good, but man. But there's more, there's more coming. So, <laughs> so hang on, everybody. And, and and by the way, thank you, plant community, for for following me and for and Hunter and being part of all this because so we we derive such joy out of it too. And you guys are great. So, but yeah, there's a little more to that. come. There's more to come. The stars of the show are kind of oh in my the gosh. way. Wait a so minute. maybe Hunter needs to turn around. Okay. And we can walk back here. Down the tunnel of love. Oh, man. Oh, my. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, Lord. So this is my true love. Holy so as oh much as I love succulents gosh. and echeverias and all that, my, my real love that my affinity goes towards oh. caddisiforms. So what's a caddisiform? A caddisiform is a succulent. A caddisiform develops what is called a caudex, a caudex right. C-A-U-D-E-X. And in habitat, most of all of these are from southern, or some South Africa. These are subterranean. Right. So this area is what holds that moisture, holds all that water, and stores it for months and months at a time. And this is all you normally see from here up right. in habitat. And these are vines. So this is my favorite time of year. Hard to believe. I know I love flowers. Who doesn't love when these are, infl are flowering? Right. But when they're vining, they get very large and right. they're covered. So in the winter, <clears throat> when they're dormant, they're deciduous, I cut them all back and you can see the incredible magnificence of the caudex. Right. And every one is different. No two are the same. There's a lot of similarities, but no two are the same. So whether it's a Fakia adulis, right. or a Raphio acme flanagani, or an adenia, or a Pacopodium succulentum, they're all different. And they all have their own characteristics, whether it's in a Adenia glauca, that is fantastic, dude. That is Isn't absolutely that beautiful. Amazing. I love the color. Is this extraordinary? I'm and these are Pacopodium. But they're they're oh, they, quite a ways away from looking like that. That one's probably about probably close to 30 years old. Yeah. So so these so uh, these are all these are all succulents. They're all caddisiforms. Here's a Cyphosema jutai. Yeah. In uh, it's in a sleep mode. Normally when these bloom, the leaves are about 12 yeah, inches. Big old right massive huge. leaves. The jute leaves are probably the largest leaf of any succulent that I'm aware of. They're just huge, at least 12 to almost 18 inches long. This, These will fill this entire area. With oh, yeah, leaves. yeah. And that's in the, one of the biggest erica pots I've ever seen. Oh, so, yeah, and you have a lot of these are erica pots back here, huh? I have a lot of, these are either all my pots or um, erica pots. So, for example, this is an erica pot. Yeah. That's an Erica pot. And that is that a Raphio Acme? It's a Raphio Acme Flanagani. Flanagani. That's awesome. Big this pot. is fan. I just the whole everything about that, the rocks, the pot, very, very nice. So that's stage for show. So you can see that's a beautiful specimen. Right. This is Denia Glocka. That's the topping. And that's the organic looking right. pot. Well that's what I mean, that's the rocks aren't, you know, glossy and no, and bright and colorful exactly when right. you go out into where these things are, are growing naturally. And these are my prize pacopodiums. That's probably the this top. Is, yeah. is this Saundersai? Which no, is that? That's a Saundersai over here. These are Saundersai. Saundersai, okay. okay. Saundersai. That's Saundersai. That's a Rosalatum. That's awesome. Yeah. And these are pacopodium succulentums. All of these here are succulentums. Actually, I take that back. That's a bispinosum. Succulentum, succulentum also and, and what's what i like about these look at the color of the bark right for the skin on these it has that dark almost mahogany color 
but that takes time. These are these are very very old. They don't look like that when they're young. That's very very old. These that pack of podium is about forty years old. Okay. I mean, these they look like just bundles of intestines or something like that. You know, at nighttime when the light's just right, I can always find different images of people or faces. It's just crazy. And this thing right here, this is what is this? This is a for as a uh, Fakia. That's a Fakia Adulis. The color on it yes. is spectacular. Yes. Um, it looks like a boab, a boabob tree. In a way, it does. Right. I mean, with not with the big roots and stuff, but like that thickness. I have a couple that are that color, and they were grown by Lee Phelps from San Diego. Okay. That was kind of his hallmark. He grew these off-color Fakias that are just impossible to find. Uh, so I was lucky enough to to get those. You know, I got to tell you, um, seeing, you know, I have been potting, making making handmade ceramics for about the last year. And so the majority of my plants are still, frankly, in plastic pots. And, and, and you and I have, although very different styles, we have a lot of similar um, uh, things that we both like and yeah. similar ways of doing it. Correct. And the organic nature of all your pots on this bench really does highlight the plant like very very much so like I, my eyes are really being drawn as much as i want to look at your pots because i haven't really had a chance to see your uh, this is my first time ever seeing your collection i'm i'm really being uh my eyes are being kind of directed to all of these massive right. codices well that's the nicest thing you can say to me uh and that, that's what I like to hear. I, well, I, get ready. There's abuse coming. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, again, you're right. The showcase here are the plants. Yeah. Now, these pots are 5, 10, 20 years old, but these plants are 20, 30, 40, 50 years right. old. Right. I mean, and dude, look at like this is just. That, again, God, and you know what? That's and a, the one, rocks these are, are one of a kind. That's, isn't that a nice staging? Is this, I want to I wanna say, I'm going to try to sound smart and correct me if I'm wrong. Is that basalt? That looks like basalt, like a basalt you know, flow, you, you know? The rock. I'm not sure, but it looks similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite plants. And you see it now. This is actually stunning. In the spring, this is completely covered with pink flowers. I mean, it is it's breathtaking and i love it oh, we'll have to do we know we'll have to do a, a we'll have to do a, a spring follow-up and just show people because i know people are gonna go what the hell does that look like when it is leafed out you know, and, and blooming there's another pack of podium namaquanum that's exactly right oh yeah baby and I, my, again my fakias look at the size of that what thing. the fakia is going on yeah, over that, here robert that, that insanity that it is insanity See, listen when you talk about staging it's like a trunk you know how i stage this is actually is leaning on the yeah top. And that, you know, that, to me, it's a more natural look. But every every Fakia is different. I mean, that thing is like a grenade. And it yeah, just yeah. keeps going, going on and on and on. Dude. Again, you, what you is it? Are those cactus? Okay. Oh, okay. my goodness. I wasn't sure you were going to go back here. <laughs> here but to all you cactus lovers out there. it's. I, I mean, it really is today. It's Codex Quest you know, for the most it part. It is Codex. Yeah, but Cactus Quest is here. So, so we got some... The, okay, let's see. Let's see what let's see what I can do here. Now that is some sort of a Parodia notocactus, and I don't know which one. But we have Thelocactus hexadrophorus, Gymnocalisium saglionis, Mammillaria something or otherus. Mammillaria. This is uh, Mammillaria Karwins Karwinskiana. A mellow cactus, another mammillaria, and I don't know, is it Geminospina? It could be. I think it is. Elongata? I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice little tight little clump. Then you got the gymnos, and then that's horse DI. Oh, 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 no! Bursera. Mm, mm, mm. How gorgeous this is. And here's a little takeoff, uh, kind of the deviation for me from my pottery. This, but you can see this is not my normal, but I love this pot. Yeah. It is just so cool. It just seemed to work with this specimen. I think so. I think you're and staging. I think you're absolutely correct, See, sir. And you, you can tell good staging when you look at it from this direction, and when you look at it from the top down. Yeah. So I yes, I do have, and I love mammillarias. I do like them. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah, Sorari and yeah. This is a, a Tyla Coden, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a very old one too. 
very, very old. A little Cespitosa, Astrophytum, Aztecium, Myriocarpus right there. Yeah. If you like this plant and you like this pot and you'd like to learn more about this stuff, I don't, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little plug right now because we're doing the sale next Saturday and, uh, uh, or this coming Saturday, January 15th, depending on when I get this finished. But Robert and I are going to be selling our pots. Uh, Peter, which you have seen in previous videos, is going to be bringing some of his amazing euphorbias and other different types of cadiciforms that, that he just sells. Like, just like one of his. Oh, I know. He loves it. That's, what made, me, that's what made me ask. But yeah, so Welcome definitely come out. Eye. That's a great pot too, man. Is that you or is that Erica? That's an Erica pot. That's a fantastic pot. Isn't that it? Everything about that whole... So it's an operculacaria, uh -huh. operculacaria decaria. Operculacaria decaria. Yeah, uh, yeah I yeah. like the staging on that too with the rocks. This, this right. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very, very good. All right. Let's see what else you got over here, oh, Mr. Sir. More stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you turn what is this? Is this what is this? That's an aliwadia. Aliwadia. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's is that a cool. crinosum? Does it say? Cr yeah. Carnia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Alo the only aliwadia that actually forms a, like a caudex. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Otherwise, they're all this columnar. They're just straight. Because I have Procera and uh, Montagnaceae. Oof. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you guys have seen in the Chiapas video when I was like literally coming undone. and Give it to me. Give me that. Let me just touch it. Oh. Oh, oh. Bad. You're a bad girl having um, inappropriate feelings for some of the uh, ficus down there, strangling the rocks and such. You got you like being bad. That's a it's... ficus pe uh, petalaris, and that's a Larry Grammer plant. Larry Grammer, epic stager who worked at uh, California Cactus right. Center. So I got that from actually from Petra, from Rare Succulents. And the story on this one, this is probably one of my more interesting ones. Larry got that obviously when it was very small and he wrapped the small roots around that, um, uh, what's, what is that? That's petrified wood. And then he buried the entire thing in a very large pot for about 20 years, wow. I was told. And then when he uh, uh, unearthed it, that's what it looked like. Wow. And when I got it, it was in a bonsai pot, a third of the size. That is the incredible. The main root was actually coming out of the bottom. Whew. That's that is crazy, gorgeous, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. I, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to trim that back. Well, you know. This is one of my favorite ones too. Look at that. You got all the oxalis in here? Yeah. I, I you know, it, it, this purple oxalis, I just love it. It dies back. Yeah. You water it and it just grows again. Well, you know, Gene and Jane over at uh, Plants for the Southwest actually use the oxalis as a indicator of whether or not the soil is too dry. Cause if the oxalis starts to uh, wilt, yeah. And they know the roots are going to start to wilt, so they know it's time to give it some water. So and it's actually kind of a good indicator plant to have in the garden from time to time. You're so true. It's so true because in the summer when it's warm out, I have to water that almost every day. That's also that's been in that pot about 25 years. <sighs> and, and am I taking it out of there? Not a chance. No way, man. Not a chance. No way. This yeah. is this one. Look at that. That's a Mesticlema tuberosa. Jeez Louise. And that's also a Larry Grammer plant. And Erica made that pot for Larry for that specimen. So I was, I consider myself extremely lucky I was able to get that one. Provenance, man. That's provenance. Cactus and Succulent Society yeah. world uh, underbelly niche world provenance. That's what it's all about. You know, every, I, I can tell you where, who oh I got Lord. these from, where I got them from, when. So that is a ficus. <laughs> that I got from my our, our buddy Woody <laughs> Jeez uh, many, Louise. Year, many years ago. Shout out to Woody, Cactus Data Plants. He's also going to be there, folks. Okay, man, I mean. But when I got this, it didn't look like that. Dude, what? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Wow. Okay. This. Isn't that, correct? Isn't that great? Good God. I'm sorry about bumping the camera. Look at that, folks. Look at that. What? A, I mean, it's. Like his pomeroy. Just. Yeah. And it's sitting on a rock. Yeah, it is. It's down down in there. Point. Good God, that is amazing. Dude, yeah. these are spectacular. The Bombax, Calabanus. Pseudo Bombax. Pseudo Bombax, that's right. That's right. Those are huge. Those are about 70 years old. It's a lot to take in, Robert. A lot to take <laughs> in over here. Wow. Look at those. Discoria elephant tippies. And they're growing. Yeah, man. Yep. Now, what ficus is this right here? 
That's a ficus pomeri. Pomeri. Okay. Yep. I got one like that that I recently staged up, and I just noticed that the the color of the bark was exactly that same color. It's yeah. a little different from. Some Whoa! Bark. Is this a jute as well? That is a jute. Gosh, look at that, dude! That's Wishbone. Split. That is from Rudy Lime in San Diego. That's his. And I couldn't believe you let that go. A nice snag that big. I think I you think you told me about that one recently. Yeah. Thing weighs about 100 pounds. And that's also in a, one of Erica's very large pots. Radical, man. Look at that butte. That's awesome. Purpose eye. Yeah. And you've got the, the <coughs> what do they, they call it? I've heard people Hysteria. refer, I've, like people go, oh, that's where the hags are. Have you ever heard that? No, the hag. Yeah, Haworthias, aloes, and gasterias. I think it's sort of a little bit of a uh, dig. I think it is, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't feel tremendously. Is this thing, what the heck? Is that alive? Scoria elephant tippies, yeah. Oh, my. Waiting, waiting, to, waiting to blossom, to grow. Dude, that is, wow. But gasterias, well, that was the first succulent that I started purchasing. I started getting into, I couldn't believe that was actually a succulent these gasterias and I started buying them and started buying them and this whole wall was covered in succulents and many years ago they were all in commercial pots that yeah. I bought and my wife said why don't we just make pots for them and I said you know what so we took the adventure and now every one of these are in one of uh, my handmade pots that is amazing dude and those are all different gasterias I love them and they all bloom easy to take care of these do not like sun no and this gets very little sun here. So that's why this wall is perfect. Gasterias love shade. Maybe a little filtered light. So that's it, and back here, this is where I keep most of my uh, deciduous, my dormant plants. Okay. That are, uh, that need to be kept out of the rain. Right. And out of the, they don't even need any sunlight now because they're just uh, sleeping. Gotcha. The scary part of this is waiting for about April, March, April, maybe beginning of May. And you see that first sign of new growth. Sometimes they never wake up. Sometimes it takes two years. But that's such a relief. Every day what is this out. little guy? Is that an Othona? I was listening to that sort of Othona, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. A very old one, too. Yeah, I would that's, say so. Yeah. That's awesome. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know, I know. What I is know. this, Robert? Yeah, it's a plastic pot. Plastic pot? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think the the leaf blower is probably a good sign that for us it's it's time the sun's going down, and uh, man, I got to tell you, dude, this is one hell of a collection. I want to thank you for uh, opening up the home, the backyard, I should say, the uh, to show me and to show my audience. There's like you know 4,700 some odd people. Shout out to every single one of you guys watching. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good place to end it. Any final words? Anything you'd like to encourage yes, people to do? I want you to see. Okay. I want you to see my, these are my newest hanging plant, uh, pots. And I, my daughter talked me into making these and I really like them. And so we are going to sell these. Nice. Next Saturday. I'm going to bring those for sale. And I hope all of you listening will come out and support us. We worked really hard, Hunter and I, to make these pots by hand, no wheel, and we want to showcase those and show all of you. And thank you guys for coming into my world and getting a chance to see how much I enjoy this, and I know you, you will too. All right, man. On that note, thank you so much. See you guys later. <laughs>